All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Ag Layer Roundtable. This is our first one. Uh, I'm Hudson. I am uh, with the community team at Polygon Labs, uh, and today we're going to just do um, some kind of discussion on some of the latest uh, things with the Ag Layer, and also talk to a few of uh, the uh, projects that are integrating with Ag Layer and kind of get their take on it, see uh, what they're up to and how they've been working with it. So yeah, I'm one of the co-hosts. I also have my other co-host here, Ayush. Ayush, if you want to give a quick intro and then we can get going on stuff. Sure. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ayush. I work with Hudson, the community team, taking care of developer communities and things. So yeah. I mostly hang out with ZK devs, so yeah, if it's ZK, I'd love to chat with you. Amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and get into uh, intros. So what we'll do is this, we'll go, uh, I'll call out each person, uh, give your name, um, your role in the organization you're with, and your favorite movie. Um, if you don't have a favorite movie, um, you can just say anything else you want. That is a dangerous thing for me to say. Uh, I will trust you all <laughs> with this live stream. Uh, so yeah, pick a movie. If not, say whatever you want. Or do both, you know? This is kind of free flow. Um, we'll go ahead. Um, you know what? Let's start with Ayush. Ayush, what's your uh, favorite movie? You already gave your name and stuff. Uh, movie? I love to check, but yeah. Uh, to say something random, uh, I have something random. So it's like... I've been recently exploring F1, so yeah, my YouTube feed is basically filled with F1 videos, so yeah. See, I, like, going to YouTube and it's just like F1 racing and ZK, you know, like, uh, talks and yeah, conferences, it, like, that has to be wild for the people in charge of the algorithm. In <laughs> Blanky 3. And Blanky 3, all day. I'm all right, cool. One. All right, uh, next up, let's go with uh, Brendan, are you in here? Yeah. Hey everyone, um, I'm Brendan. I uh, work on Polygon ZK R and D stuff. Um, I think my favorite movie is just like so cliched, but I'll I'll, I'll give a a favorite TV show. I think uh, I think True Detective season one is is a favorite for me. Oh, I haven't seen that actually, but I have heard good things. Okay, we got some agreement uh, <laughs> with a few other people about True Detective. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that sounds great. Uh, next up, we'll go with Jordy. Yeah, hello, I'm I'm I'm, I'm Jordi. I'm Jordi Marina. I'm the technical lead at the Polygon CKBN. In also working a bit in also in the aggregation layer for the last uh, for the last month, um, at least in, at design level. And uh, my favorite movie, I would say, maybe depends on the day and the, and the motivation and <laughs> the feeling that I have. But for me, one of the movies that I, I enjoyed a lot that comes to my mind now was uh, Apollo 13. Oh, okay, yeah, that was a good one. Um, and actually, oh, I never said my movie. Um, that's kind of a hard one. I don't watch even that many movies. Um, but there actually was one that I really, really liked recently, which was like an anime movie, and I don't watch a ton of those, but it was called Suzume. So I saw that in theaters with a few of my anime, like, like watching friends, um, and that was really good. All right, let's see who we got next. Uh, let's go with, um, who was it? Oh, 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 I got the list here. I was like, we have special guests today. Um, Alex, are you here from Gateway? Yes, exactly. So I'm Alex. I'm uh, from Gateway FM. So we're building the Google App as a service as a product from Polygon, Polygon CTK. So my favorite movie is Inception. Ooh, that's a good one. I forgot about yeah. that. I always look at like tops and I, yeah, always think of that movie. <laughs> um, all right. And then, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, uh, the, the seal from uh, Gateway? Yeah. That's correct. Uh, yeah, let me just like show myself for a second. Hey, hello. <laughs> so yeah, regarding uh, yeah, my name is Vassil. I'm I'm heading the business development in in Gateway. So I'm pretty much getting like all of the feedback about like Eclair and Polygon Tech from our uh, valuable customers. So would would love to share some insights. Uh, in terms of the movies, I'm gonna provide aggregator answer. I really like anime. I like uh, Death Note. I really like uh, One Plus One in, 
the Intouchables. Uh, this is the French movie. And I also really enjoy watching Schindler's List, if you if you watch those one. So, yeah, thank you. Great picks, great picks. All right, uh, next, I think we have uh, Firat from Nier. Hey. Hey, everyone. My name is Firat. I'm from Nier Protocol. Um, I'm leading some of the chain abstraction related products uh, from a technical side. My favorite movie, um, let's say recent to bias a little bit, but I've seen Dune, Dune Part 2 lately. It was amazing. I went to it twice. I'm planning to go the third time. Oh, man. I was, people were begging me to see that. I still haven't seen the first Dune. So that's that's probably my biggest fault as a person is not having seen Dune uh, or Dune Two. Um, all right. Uh, next up, we have. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, let's see if they're here. Is um, a Star Network? I think they had someone, right? Maybe not. Okay. If that is the case, I think did I get everybody? Trying to see. Oh, yeah. I think I got everybody. You forgot me, bro. Oh, yeah. Pff, Keneal, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm community manager at Polygon Discord. Um, my favorite movie is all of the parts of Final Destination, like from one to five. And uh, due to its thriller and all of their honor. So, yeah. <laughs> Amazing, yes. So, so Final Destination. Oh, those are the ones that have the really scary scenes with logs. And I've never seen the movies, but my friends like see a logging truck and always get freaked out. That's that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. All right, awesome. Well, great. Well, let's get into it. Again, uh, today we're talking about the Ag Layer. Uh, which is something that Polygon Labs is building, but it's you know going to be a public good, everyone can use it type of thing. Uh, you know, chains uh, are able to join, and it's going to provide uh, a system for unified liquidity and uh, just aggregation across different chains that want to come and join it. So uh, yeah, we're very excited about this. It's kind of been everything that Labs Polygon Labs has been focusing on, besides. Uh, you know some of the underlying things that really make it make it happen, like zkVM, different proving technologies, uh, CDK, which is one of our uh, ways that people can you know build their own roll up on our technology. But yeah, today we brought everyone in so we could kind of discuss you know wh why we're building Ag Layer, but then also you know how people are participating and bringing their uh, communities and their teams and technology into the Ag Layer. So um, I'm going to go through a few questions and then I'm going to pass it to Ayush to go through a few questions. And then we're going to have uh, open questions with uh, the chat uh, as uh, any time that is left. So uh, if you're in the chat today uh, in Discord, feel free to, on the top right corner, hit the little like chat box and you can see that there will be a, kind of a conversation going uh, and you can ask a question in there and we'll keep up with those. And uh, then uh, if we have time at the end, which we should, ask some of those. Someone said, is Ag Layer the final destination? Oh, man, that's way too deep of a question. Let's wait 30 years. Um, OK, so <laughs> first to kick it off, um, I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to Brendan. Uh, one last thing I'm going to say is there is uh, someone who posted links in the chat to some explainer documents and videos. And uh, those are very helpful if you just have no knowledge of the ag layer. But um, Brendan, if you could do like a few sentences on what the ag layer is, and then the question uh, that we had for this is, how do you envision ag layer impacting products and services offered by Polygon, and how will this extend to the broader ecosystem? Uh, yeah, sure. So I think at a high level, we can describe the ag layer as a decentralized service that enables unified state and liquidity across L2 chains. And by unified state and liquidity, we basically mean two things. So first, uh, we get asset fungibility. So if you have um, like ETH on Polygon ZKVM and you want to move it to ASTAR or to OKX, uh, you can just seamlessly bridge that representation of, of native ETH uh, from one chain to another. And, and you don't have to worry about um, swapping out of wrapped synthetics or, or like trying to figure out like if the... Uh, if the version of ETH that you're holding matches the base pair in the pool that you want to trade, um, 
you just have ETH and you can bring that ETH anywhere in the ecosystem. And so that's what we mean by asset fungibility. The, uh, the second component is super, super low latency um, cross-chain uh, interoperability, both asynchronous and synchronous. Um, and so that means that, uh, like right now, if you want to move funds from uh, like one L2 to another, like let's say you, you have some funds on Polygon ZKVM and you want to move them to, uh, let's say like ZK Sync. Um, you would need to initiate a withdrawal transaction on ZKVM. Uh, you would need to wait for a proof to be generated. You need to wait for that proof to be verified on Ethereum. You need to wait for the block containing that proof to be finalized on Ethereum. Uh, and then you need to wait for your deposit transaction uh, to be finalized on Ethereum. Um, and so it like all in, that takes like 40 minutes. And so you can think of the ag layer as taking the latency of cross-chain interoperability from like 40 minutes to uh, like a couple seconds or potentially less than a second. And so we see these two things, asset fungibility and then super low latency interop as combining to, to, to give unified liquidity and unified state and basically take a fragmented uh, multi-chain ecosystem, which is the Ethereum L2 ecosystem, and make it feel for users like using a single chain. Like users don't need to reason about like, okay, uh, I'm on this chain, but this NFT mint or this game that I want to play is on some other chain. How do I like get my funds from one chain to another? They don't need to think about like where their, their funds or their assets are, are located in block space. They just get to access anything that happens in the entire ag, the ag layer ecosystem uh, with no friction and, and very seamlessly. And so um, I think that's the impact for the ecosystem is, um, is like solving this problem where right now we, we can have horizontal scalability. We can uh, allow anyone to spin up an L2 on Ethereum and, and we can add block space. Um, but that comes at the expense of having a fragmented ecosystem. And so this is designed to solve fragmentation. Awesome. Yeah, that's a really good uh, summary of that. And when I think of like the unified liquidity concepts and, and you know, things like that, I think I think liquidity always brings up like, what's it like monetary terms or DeFi terms where it's like, oh, you know, you can have like liquidity pools across or things like that. But I think of it as like also, you know, IoT data that's like on different, you know, ZK chains that all kind of go up to the same layer so that you don't have to choose a chain for you know, uh, a marketplace of data or NFT or like you said, or things like that. So yeah, really, really, really cool stuff. Um, Jordi, I'm going to pass the next one to you. Um, how do you plan to leverage ag layer to drive product development and innovation at Polygon? So like, what are the things that you've, you know, seen, and it doesn't even have to be exactly at Polygon, but like, how, how do you see a lot of the stuff that you're optimizing for in the ag layer affecting the things that have gone through either like Polygon as far as people building on Polygon or what or what uh, Labs is building itself? Many, many, many things here. The, I mean, the, the first thing is that the, 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 I mean, the, the Polygon 2.0, the, I mean, the, the CDKs, uh, the layers that are connected are right now are very much uh, based on the uh, ZKVM technology. So securing and, and having a good uh, ZKVM is the basic uh, piece for this uh, aggregation layer. I mean, uh, and this is important because I mean, this is, is uh, this is the base. Uh, this is the the base. Uh, this is the basic chains. Maybe in the future is going to be other chains uh, like Maiden or maybe other chains that. Uh, 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 may connect uh, with different provers or with different uh, uh, consensus mechanisms, with different things, but the ZKVM is the, the basic piece. The other part is all the experience and all the, I mean, in the last year we have been uh, uh, feeling and, and, and working a lot in maturing the, the, all the ZK uh the zk prover especially the especially in the soundness part we have been working a lot on that part this is also so having this uh, technology mature uh as starting to be right now is really important for this ecosystem that uh, that that we are creating 
and the the other way to see, I mean, I think that Brendan explained it very well. What's the the, the, the aggregation layer? But there is another way to see that, and is the very much the the scaling. Uh, so the, the the way of scaling blockchains. Uh, uh, so the same way that uh, a rollup was a good solution for, I mean, for for scaling a single chain. Uh, when you want to have uh, multiple chains, uh, there's this uh, so the generation layer allows you to have like multiple chains uh, working as a single chain. And this is the, the same way that you have a, a processor with one core or many cores. I mean, you can do the core faster and better, but then you can have like many cores in that. So this is this part of parallelizing, of this part of having different chains uh, in the network, different independent chains, even with different with very different uh, context, can be changed with centralized sequencer, changed with decentralized sequencer, changed with a specific token, changed without a token, changed with data availability in some places, changed with data availability in other places. It changed with a different configuration, with a different, uh, even with a different, uh, I mean, the case of Maiden or other change, with even with a different um, uh, state transition functions, they can live together in, 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 in the same world, I mean, the same space, in the same aggregation layer. That's where we are living. And communicate with each other, transfer value with each other, use the same liquidity with each other, acting as a, as, as, the, as the same chain. And this is, I think, that's really, it's, this is really powerful. So, I mean, maybe it's a very used word, but when we're, we were building the Internet of Value, we're referring to that. I mean, like having many chains with many different... Mm, uh, governance systems. I mean, with very different setups, but all of them they can in communicate with each other with the warranty that uh, all this value uh, is kept. Uh, uh, I mean, is kept in a correct way. I mean, in a in a way that uh, can. I mean, in a safe way. Uh, that there is no chain or no user that can take more money than the one that it has and double spending and, and all this, keeping all that. And this is what aggregation layer, this is the challenge of the aggregation layer. This is what we are uh, building and been very excited uh, uh, um, for this. I mean, I really want to see this to happen. I really want to see the uh, new uh, chains uh, start uh, connecting to the aggregation layer and uh, start connecting different chains and getting values from, from, from different chains. I mean, here we can put some examples, but I mean, maybe uh, uh, some uh, hotels chain that's connecting with uh, some rent -a -car chain, maybe with some transfers or some exchange because you are using different coins. I mean, and you can, you may want to do, do a, a transaction that, a composite transaction that actually connects with different chain, with all different chains. This is, I mean, this is, uh, we are still far from there, but this is a little bit the 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 the, the world that we are uh, envisioning uh, with this aggregation layer. Amazing. And uh, just real quick from both you and Brendan, and then I want to go to um, some of the guests here today. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, like how do you, like the collaboration that we've been having with the star um near and uh, uh like and others uh, gateway obviously what 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 have you seen you know outside contributors bring to the table as this is being built and like why is that really important to what we're doing oh we could do uh jordy first and then brendan yeah i mean uh, of course uh, so this is um this is a community effort i mean uh, here we are connecting networks and uh, putting these networks up, uh, up and running and connecting them is a fundamental piece. And, and, and listening to all these networks and, 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 and working together with all these networks is the only way uh, to set up these uh, to set up this space. So this is, I mean, this is not a polygon effort. This is a beyond polygon. I mean, it's polygon is just one piece that's uh, building this, this piece. I mean, this piece is going to be built by all the chains that are going to be uh, part of this decentralized of this decentralized system. So the role of all the chains and all the integrations is uh, fundamental for uh, the segregation layer to become, to become a reality. Amazing. Brendan? Um, yeah, I, I would just echo Jordy. Um, 
but but not not only on the chain side but also like on the infrastructure side so you you can think of like the ag layer that polygon is building or the component of the ag layer that polygon's building as like this um this sort of like foundation that provides a cryptographic guarantee so that when chains interoperate uh, or when they use a shared bridge they know that they can do so safely um but the thing that, like the infrastructure that actually allows chains to interoperate, so like shared sequencers, relays, um, builders, like we're we're not building that, and we're relying on other teams like Espresso and NodeKit and um, like different relay teams to actually provide that infrastructure and to give chains choices, um, so they can like you know opt for the best the best options and and sort of a credibly neutral environment like. It, it doesn't really work conceptually if, if Polygon's building the whole stack. And so I, I think that's like a really exciting thing is like Polygon is providing a component, um, but, but actually some of the most Im like impactful and important components of this system are, are being built by external contributors. And, and, and like, you know, Polygon has no, uh, you know, no, no ability to like force chains to pick between the, this coordination infrastructure or like, like fundamentally it's, it's a system where chains can uh, be fully free and, and sovereign to make trade-offs that make sense for their use cases and their users. Awesome. Great answer. So yeah, now we're going to run through um, and talk to some of the other uh, people here from uh, projects that aren't Polygon Labs, since it's been a Polygon Labs uh, speaking thing so far. So let's go ahead and start with a star. So you're the first chain to actually be added to the ag layer. So what like motivated y'all to use ag layer and, and work with us on that? And how do you see this integration uh, benefiting a star's ecosystem and its users? And also, actually, before any of that, if you could, in a few sentences, uh, just kind of discuss uh, a star just for those who might not be familiar with it. And then, yeah, what was the motivation and how do you see see things changing? Oh, and I think you're muted if you're talking. Oh, and we have been having technical difficulties, so it's possible they can't hear me. Let's see. Are you here, um, a star? Okay, we'll go ahead and go to another person then. So next up, we are going to... Oh. Okay, we can hear it. Great. Yeah, there's a few people where they're having trouble hearing um, in the audience and then also hearing once they get to the stage. So we're working on that. Seems more like a Discord issue. Um, <clears throat> next up, I'm going to have this question for the Near team. Um, so as a contributor building the stack with Polygon and working with ZK Wasm, how do you see the ag layer enhancing the capabilities of Z a ZK Wasm based chain? And if you could kind of uh, explain ZK Wasm and how that would be integrated into, you know, like a chain that would then connect to the ag layer um, before mentioning, yeah, like what the motivation was and why you're doing it. Sure. Um, just, a, just a side note, I'm not personally working on ZK Wasm. I understand how more or less it works and how it connects to ag layer, but no problem. excuse me if I make any mistake. But I can, I can generally kind of explain um why ag layer is important for zk wasm base chains and specifically for deer um so lately we've been we've been really honing into the idea of chain abstraction what does that mean <clears throat> users should not be um should not be limited by the capabilities of one chain users should not care if they're um, operating in one chain as long as the the, as the underlying security assumptions are um, correct and uh, they're safe to um, interact, right? Um, and to realize that there has to be some kind of a mechanism or some kind of an infrastructure that kind of abstract this whole thing where um, ag layer comes into play in a place where it is, it is possible to realize this. And ZK Wasm is... So for people that who, does, who don't know, Wasm is another runtime, um, a contract runtime or virtual machine, um, just like EVM, right? And from what I understand for at least what I've been um, talking to the engineers on my side is that for us to be actually compatible, um, the proofs coming up from the execution has to be 
um, compatible with ag layer, which is why there's a project called ZK Wasm, so that um, the execution can be provable for the Wasm based chains. So that is why it's important for us to hone in on, on ZK Wasm to realize this, this reality where the users should should be free to choose um, whatever chain they're, 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 they're interacting with that without caring um, where the assets live or if their applications are interacted with multiple chains. For that to happen securely, the, the important point of this is secure, um, cryptographic, sec cryptographically secured systems are um, very much favored, right? That's why we think that ag layer is very, very important in this chain abstraction vision. Awesome. No, yeah. I mean, as someone who is also not coding day to day on this stuff, I think you got it exactly right. So yeah, no notes. Um, that does sound correct. And you know, zk Wasm and then other you know alternatives to the EVM. There's like SVM, and then there's some other stuff, including I think Arbitrums or Arbitrums. I think is working on one. So there's just a lot of that cool stuff out there. So it's re it's really good to see Near stepping up and uh, being one of those participants in the ecosystem doing that. Um, next up, we're going to talk to Gateway. Um, and Gateway, I've definitely seen you all be very prominent in uh, the ecosystem and supporting um, what we're doing. So how are things like uh, on, on the, like the implementation provider? So just like, uh, just for nomenclature's sake, implementation provider are the people who are stepping up and on a, at a large level helping uh, Polygon Labs and the other people building on AgLayer build on AgLayer. So how is it on um, you know the implementation provider side uh, adding existing offerings for spinning up a chain with CDK? And how do you anticipate that the ag layer will impact the experience for chain providers and protocols and applications looking to work on chains? Uh, and also if you can just give yeah a brief intro into like what Gateway is and, and how they uh, help the ecosystem. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question and opportunity to share our experience here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more from the business standpoint of view, like uh, how do you see our customers reacting to the egg layer? Why do they select like Polygon as a software stack and uh, what kind of risk they anticipate? I think that's that might be interesting for the community and people here. So we in, in Gateway, we do um, uh, we have a service called Presto, which is roll up as a service uh, um, like a platform that uh, allows you to deploy Polygon, CDK, ZKVM rollups and Validium within six minutes, right? So you can go there, you can, um, yeah, you can do kind of like a puzzle thingy when you put everything together and then create your rollup and start playing around with that one. So yeah, uh, from, from the business perspective to answer your question, basically when we see uh, customers coming to us, uh, they, they are betting on different software stacks, right? So they have, uh, um, they're thinking, oh, should we deploy the rollup on uh, uh, optimistic rollup, or maybe we should do hyperledger, who knows, or maybe we should go to Polygon CDK. And a uh, couple of things that are important and uh, our customers are um, usually taken into the consideration, even though uh, ZK EVM rollups, they're more expensive. Right, because you have the prover, and uh, uh, you need to pay for the security. Security does not; uh, uh, it's not; it's not just cheap uh, thingy. And um, our customers, they do understand that uh, by providing this extra uh, money, they um, they expect to get something uh, something in return. So security is like one thing. Another one, they see this money as an investment in the future-proof technology. Right, because uh, um, building on uh, like any software stack available in the market, this is the bet for the future. But if you um, if this particular rollup and software stack is uh, good enough and uh, will bring the value to your um, to your product, what would be the liquidity? How the roadmap will look like? Do would you need to migrate, for example, in two three years because uh, uh, because the technology wouldn't be there or it would be buggy and so on? And I think having the egg layer. Uh, actually help to justify the price, this extra price that uh, customers pay for uh, ZK EVM rollups, the first one. Second one, we work a lot with the startups, right? And the, for, for the startups to select the proper kind of like a, uh, base, right, to, to build on top is super important, right? And the egg layer and uh, uh, access to the quality increase the chances of startups surviving, right? And uh, uh, once 
successful, it will drive the, the, the value of the company up as well, right? So they, they see it as a kind of investment into the value of the company, right? If you if you select the, the, the proper the proper stack, right? And um, as of now, um, in terms of like a technical point of view, uh, it's harder to, for us to implement, right? And we need to spend more hours working to get uh, uh, every rollup connected to, to act layer, right? And I, I so far, I believe we have... Uh, Around like a five of them also kind of connected to Eclair with with testnet. It's a little bit more expensive from a um, hardware perspective, but uh, we believe that the value uh, for future value it's way more higher than uh, um, uh, than this um, kind of like a cost that you that, that you need to pay right now. And also. Um, just like we 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 done an analysis of our customers recently, we believe that thirty percent of uh, for 30% of our customers, aggregation layer is kind of like a must, right? And they're with Polygon because of only because of this technology, right? Which is uh, quite quite a high number, and uh, this is only beginning, right? And in the future, I believe that this number will will increase even more. And also, we start seeing that the more people coming to us, starting to talk about the prover type one, right? And this idea that we look at. With the type one prover, you will be able to kind of connect like any EVM chain to uh, Polygon liquidity, right? We will uh, kind of make the real internet of the blockchain and basically aggregate everything, right? So for us, uh, just like to sum up everything, yeah, for us, it's harder to integrate a little bit, but we see it as an investment in our customers because success of our customers is our success and we are ready to, to, to sacrifice here. Um, for us, it's uh, um, we see more customers coming to Polygon because of the egg layer, right? So we see the, the good upside in terms of the business, and uh, yeah, and we believe this is a, a future-proof solution, like a very unique in a way on the market, and uh, yeah, no one no one offers that uh, before, and no one offers it right now, and. Um, with the development of type one prover, it will only uh, solidify this proposition in the future. Yeah, so I'm so sorry for the long answer, but uh, yeah, I just uh, think no, it, uh, That's really interesting though. I, thank you so much for the answer because <clears throat> as someone who is like, over the years interacted with a lot of infrastructure providers, it's really, really cool to see a lot of them stepping up to this newest technology because there was a shift from being very conservative back in the day to you know being less conservative now. And the uh, most surprising takeaway is that anyone is wanting to use Hyperledger still. Um, no, no shade on Hyperledger, but like I just haven't heard that word in a while. <laughs> no, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing because uh, right now we have three customers that we're migrating from Hyperledger to Polygon CDK. You know, because right. because the technology is so bad and it's so many limitations. And then, like, it's actually the funny story. I'm so, sorry, sorry to take so much time. But uh, we we had a call a couple of weeks ago and the customer said, like, oh, guys, like, can you handle, like, a one TPS? And we was like, wow, Vanilla CDK can handle, like, a way more than that. And uh, for them, it was, like, a one TPS on Hyperledger. It was kind of like a big deal, you know, like, and we solved the limitations. So you would be surprised what, what's happening on the market, especially in Web3 industry. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, that's that's super super interesting. So yeah, um, uh, what we're gonna do now is gonna go to the questions, and we have a few in here. I'm just gonna make sure I can scroll up to the first one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip. Is Aglayer the final destination? Although you know, we're gonna see. Maybe it will be the final destination. Um, so let's see the first one. Oh, okay. So um, Tariq asks. Um, they're from uh, Affine, uh, or Affine, sorry if I'm mispronouncing. They said, recently we saw this tweet from Mahalo, and if you scroll up in the chat, you can see the tweet, um, about connecting all chains to the ag layer. But our understanding was that we can only do cross-chain interop on ZK-enabled L2 chains. How do we envision this future will materialize where all other chains, non-EVM and optimistic L2s, get connected to the ag layer? And this is really interesting because we had, you know, uh, this question answered uh, in a pre few few calls ago, I think, when the ag layer announcement first came out. So I'm also curious uh, if there's been iteration on that or uh, whatever else. So I think last time Brendan answered that. So Brendan, if you want to uh, tackle that one again and kind of give an overview. Yeah, sure. So, so I'll, I'll give sort of a, a rambling answer, but hopefully pull it together at the end. Um, but uh, th there's this interesting property um, where part of the way that the ag layer works is that uh, chains share a unified bridge 
this is fundamentally what enables uh, unified liquidity and asset fungibility. But uh, there's a tension here, which is that we, we want chains to be able to share a unified bridge, but we also want them to be able to customize their execution environment. So we, we'd like chains to be able to run uh, a type 2 ZKVM, a type 1 ZKVM, Polygon Maiden, um, maybe uh, a future like Solana VM, uh, Move VM, um, basically a a anything that you can imagine, we would like to support. And the problem here is that um, if we uh, allow any chain with any execution environment to join, um, the probability that some chain in this, uh, in this ecosystem has some issue with its prover uh, goes up pretty dramatically. So there, there could be like a soundness issue or maybe a chain, um, you know, creates a, an unsound prover maliciously so it can, it can generate uh, proofs that, that are valid for, for invalid transactions. Um, and so this is really bad because uh, if an invalid transaction is allowed in the ecosystem, then it could potentially drain the shared bridge of all funds that are deposited across all chains. And so this is like a catastrophic existential risk. And so the way that we address this in the ag layer is we basically don't trust any chain's uh, prover to, to be sound. Like from the ag layer perspective, um, it actually doesn't really care if, if a chain has a sound prover because it verifies independently that a chain can only withdraw uh, up to the amount of funds that are currently deposited in that chain. So we call this the invariant proof or the interchain accounting proof. Um, and so th this is a really, really important uh, feature of the ag layer because it allows us to have safety for a shared bridge with heterogeneous execution environments. And, and th this is like a, a really, really core uh, component of the design and, and something that's like a really important differentiator for the ag layer. And so the consequence of this is that from the ag layer's perspective, it's actually not important for a chain to have like a validity proofs or, or, or to be fully proven to connect to the ag layer. Um, it is important from the user's perspective. Obviously, uh, if a chain doesn't provide validity proofs, then the operators of that chain could um, could steal funds or or could uh, like create an invalid transaction that mints a bunch of tokens that we're supposed to have a fixed supply. And so validity proofs still have a really important role in the ecosystem. But from the ag layer's perspective, they're not essential. And so what this means is, uh, even if you are not a fully ZK proven chain with a validity proof for every transaction that occurs on your chain, um, you can still join the ag layer if you have a, a notion of finality. And so the interesting thing here is that that, that admits obviously like ZK rollups and, and, and validiums and ZK proven chains. Um, it also admits uh, like side chains or, or chains that are running uh, with proof of consensus because from the Agler's perspective, uh, you know, we, we don't really care what happens in those chains. Users are free to use those chains at their own risk, but we can guarantee that um, these chains are quarantined against like an invalid transaction affecting the Agler ecosystem. What's finally very interesting is that optimistic rollups actually don't fit in this model because chains need a notion of finality um, at like lower latency than, than the latency at which users interoperate. So in theory, an optimistic rollup could join this ecosystem, um, but users would only be able to move funds uh, uh, into and out of that optimistic rollup at the latency of the native bridge. And for existing rollups, that's uh, optimistic rollups, that's like seven days. And so optimistic rollups don't really fit in this model. And so we've thought about like, okay, how do we get optimistic rollups to like sort of fit within the ag layer? And I think the best option is to upgrade them to becoming ZK proven chains. That's the only way to like uh, enable them to join the ag layer without sacrificing their status as an L2 or their security for users. And so to that end, we developed uh, the type one prover, which basically allows us to take any e existing EVM chain um, generate validity proofs for all transactions um, and seamlessly uh, upgrade that chain to be uh, a ZKL2. And so that's kind of the strategy is um, like ZK proven chains and side chains and POA chains are, are all free to join the ag layer. <laughs> 
but optimistic rollups are not. And so the way that we see onboarding optimistic rollups is to actually convert them to, to ZKL2s. Got it. Okay, thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and yeah, I, I think that probably answers uh, Tariq's question. They also mentioned that uh, they uh, love to build cross-chain DeFi, DeFi products on CDK if the future is close enough. So is there an indication of rough timeline? Is it months? Is it years? Uh, and also settlement time examples for two ag layer connected chains would be super helpful. So, um, and I don't know if, you know, they will exactly have an answer, but if Gateway is here, uh, do you have, you know, any like stuff you've done to see settlement times on this? And if not, I'll pass it back to, to Jordi and, and everybody. No, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not the right person to answer that. That's for sure. No so, problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. so, so Jordi, what Jordi, and then if Brendan has, uh, any follow-up on this, what is the rough timeline for ag layer for maybe either today, like today versus months from now for like how people can interact with it and what is examples of settlement times for ag layer? Well, currently we have the Alex and White Bridge, and uh, with the Alex and White Bridge, you actually you can connect different chains. I mean, we are already start seeing uh, uh, we are start seeing um, uh, bridge transfers between Astar and and uh, ZKVM and, and, and the other way around. Uh, right now. Uh, Mm, this is, I mean, we need to wait for the proof to, to, to be on layer one, and then the transfer just happens uh, uh, automatically. Okay. Next stage, uh, next stage, which we hope, I mean, uh, we are targeting, let's say, Q2, uh, Q2, maybe beginning of Q3, but I mean, it's around Q2. Uh, it should be, I mean, the idea is that uh, instead of a chain um, sending their own proof, we uh, we provide kind of a service that will aggregate all the proofs of all the chains. Okay, so this is the main the main advantage of that is that uh, uh, the chains uh, the chains will not have to pay for the for the gas of sending the proof, or at least uh, will share this cost with uh, all the with all the with all the chains. So that means that the the, the, the this cost is going to be reduced a lot, and that means that these uh, these timings that right now is currently about one hour, the, the timing where this uh, aggregated proof can be sent on chain can be reduced a lot. I mean, maybe it can be reduced to the the order of magnitude of, uh, let's say, a few minutes. Okay, so we go from the order of magnitude one hour to a few minutes. So we hope that in a very short term, having a few minutes uh, latency should be a straightforward. Okay. But the real challenging, I mean, and the real aggregation layer, I mean, when we're talking about aggregation layer, is very much when we, we, we see these uh, few seconds uh, settlement time between one and the other. Okay, And this means we need, we need to build this uh, aggregation layer. This aggregation layer is a little bit more complex because it has a kind of a consensus mechanism on the top where chains can come into the states and where all the proofs are generated on that. There is a, a, I mean, it's a dependency uh, between the chains and between the dependency uh, between the states of the different chains that needs to be built, and here uh, we are. Uh, we hope that we can have. Uh, we can start. Uh, I mean, we're targeting again. I mean, I'm, I'm saying times, and I do not take it as a commitment, okay? Because it's a development and maybe things. But we are targeting here uh, Q3, Q4 of this uh, year. Uh, uh, to have it up and running. But again, this is what we are building right now, and. We need to see uh, uh, how the development how the development works. But uh, I mean, I'm quite excited. Uh, uh, I'm quite excited that this is evolving really, really, really fast, and there's many apps currently working on that. And I hope this uh, is gonna. I hope that this accelerates. Uh, this uh, development time can accelerate a lot. Awesome. Um, let's go to the next question. Um, will this connect to Cosmos ICP and Polkadot XCM? So I think uh, if you want to just quickly tackle this, Brendan, because you already kind of mentioned what the parameters would be to join. And if you're familiar with uh, Cosmos ICP or Polkadot XCM, maybe you would have an idea of if it could. Um, I'm not sure I'm familiar with ICP. Is that uh, that's the interconnection protocol ICP? that Cosmos uses? So if you're a chain in Cosmos, you connect to oh, ICP. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought that was IBC, but... Uh, okay. Oh, you're right. Um, it is IBC. <laughs> okay, they must have mistyped um, it, yeah. 
Yeah, so so I think that this is so definitely Cosmos chains can connect um uh to the Aglair. I think that um the Aglair offers a better experience than IBC because uh you get asset fungibility, which is something that's really important. So like on Cosmos chains there there's this issue where um like if I bridge from Osmosis to um DYDX to Noble or something then I like at each hop in that path, I'm given like a different wrapped synthetic that depends on uh, the origin chain that I'm coming from. And so from the perspective of unified liquidity and, and capital efficiency and fungibility, this isn't ideal. And so I, I think the ag layer is, is a real leap forward relative to the existing interchain protocols that we've seen. Um, whether chains could connect using IBC uh, sort of at the coordination infrastructure uh, level, like like instead of using a shared sequencer or a relay, they, they just use IBC. Um, I think that, that might make sense. Um, but they would be using the ag layer uh, to guarantee cryptographic safety when, when they're accessing the shared bridge. Um, and so, so we definitely think that Cosmos chains, and I believe Polkadot chains, but I'm less familiar, um, will be able to plug into the ag layer. And in fact, there are multiple that are going to uh, be joining the ag layer. Um, and so I think that's like a really exciting thing. And, and it's a cool opportunity to sort of unify liquidity and state and apps um, between the Cosmos and, and Ethereum ecosystems. Awesome. OK. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I mean, for a lot of these questions about like, can this network connect? Can that network connect? I think it depends on if someone takes the time to build out the necessary components to connect to the ag layer, because we're setting it up so generally that just ju in the same way that people build connectors from other L1s to Ethereum or from Ethereum to Cosmos via, I think it's Osmosis or um, EVM1 or whatever. No, it's... Oh. Yeah, either way, there's like a there's like an EVM to Cosmos connector, but uh, yeah, stuff like that. I can kind of see that happening. There being a whole ecosystem of that. Um, <clears throat> so the next questions here. Let me see. Um, is there a form of restaking tech to power or enable the chains on the Ag layer, and how does the pull token utility fit in the Ag layer? Um, Jordy, if you want to cover that, or if not, Brendan. So the first question, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, is there any form of restaking tech to enable the chains oh. on the ag layer? So I guess like uh, re, re hypothecation or re, yeah, whatever that word is, like eigenlayer and stuff. We, we work in pure. I mean, we work. Uh, so the ag layer works in pure tokens. Uh, uh, the thing is, these uh, pure tokens may can they may be some restaking. Uh, tokens at some point, but the, aggreg the aggregation layer, as it's designed, it works with uh, just uh, regular ERC-20 uh, tokens. Gotcha. Uh, um, and yeah, for, for the pull token utility, Brendan, um, do we know yet like what options are available for that or because the ag layer is literally just you know a layer that people connect to to aggregate across different chains, it doesn't really need anything involving that? Yeah, so so the plan right now, it, it, we're, we're still evaluating um, how exactly uh, nodes will will use or will, will sort of be staked uh, to run Aglayer infrastructure. So I, I think Pol will be involved. I think there's also a question about whether Ethereum restakers should be allowed to participate. And I, I think these discussions are, are preliminary and, and you know, I, I think the goal is to figure out something that works for, for Polygon and also for uh, sort of credible neutrality and Ethereum ecosystem. Because I think fundamentally, uh, like we see this, I, I think a lot of projects have the wrong perspective where the focus is very short term and it's very much in capturing value in the short term. And so we can see this manifested in things like um, taking a percentage of sequencer fees or taking a percentage of profits that are made by chains and uh, being super restrictive in governance and, and locking chains into using a particular um, like interoperability standard or, or like in the case of the super chain, I, 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 my understanding is that chains can't leave without a governance vote. Um, 
And so I think, uh, I think that this is the wrong approach. And I think it's a very different one from one, what we're taking at Polygon, which is to basically say, we, want, we, we, we actually are not going to focus on, on value capture in the short term. We think that the best thing for the long-term success of the Ethereum ecosystem and the Polygon ecosystem is to grow the pie as big as possible. Like we want as much economic value to be on the ag layer and, and like nothing that we should do in the short term should ever be construed as rent seeking or placing restrictions on chains or trying to like prioritize the interests of Polygon at the expense of the interests of the chains that use the ag layer. And so that view really motivates how we think about the ag layer and credible neutrality and building infrastructure that's meant to be a public good. Um, I think to the earlier question about uh, like restaking, um, uh, I think that uh, like we, we've spoken about the staking hub and the staking layer, and um, that's definitely on the roadmap. And I think that will be important for um, for chains that. Uh, for regulatory reasons or for sort of community alignment reasons, really want to prioritize decentralized sequencing um, in the short term. And so I, I think that this will definitely play, will play a role. Um, in terms of the, the poll utility, I, again, like I, I think it's really important not to take a super short term view on this, but um, you know, Polygon does have chains that are running on the ag layer, or will be connected to the ag layer. So that's Polygon ZKVM, Polygon POS, Polygon Maiden. And obviously those chains will have sequencer fees and those sequencer fees will be directed to, uh, to holders of the pull token. And, and so I, I think that's like a model that, that, that is sort of tested and, and is coherent for, um, for value accrual. Uh, so that's how I would say we're, we're, we're thinking about it right now. But, but I, I, I do want to emphasize like, it's really important, I think, to take a long-term view and to focus on, like, Polygon success will follow from the growth and success of the ag layer ecosystem. And we really need to be careful to align incentives and not do anything to jeopardize the maximum growth of, of that ecosystem. Awesome, amazing. I, I love that, like, the, you know, growth mindset, but also the neutrality and the, you know, kind of taking, a, like, minimizing Polygon Labs influence in favor of other people coming in is going to be a really, really key, important thing over time. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to wrap it up here. <clears throat> so how I'm going to wrap it up is uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, Gateway uh, and Near. and what I'll do is I'll just uh, ask you all to give closing thoughts, um, and in particular, how people can kind of interact and and work with what you all are doing or maybe even help in the case of near if there's like a, a website to go to if someone wants to learn more or contribute in gateway uh same with you and then lastly uh jordy and brendan uh we'll get final thoughts from you and then also talk about if someone wants to contribute to the ag layer um i believe we are going to be uh, putting a tweet out with resources today, uh, but if anyone wants to contribute, what the best way uh, to do that is. So we're going to go ahead and we'll start with Gateway. Uh, so, so Gateway, final thoughts, um, everything? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for organizing. And I really enjoyed the icebreaker about the movies. I think it was <laughs> really great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've learned a lot. And um, yeah, if you would like to create a, a Polygon CDK rollup, even today, you can go to, to our website. I'm going to share the link here and just to give it a try. It's just like a six minutes. Sorry, guys, we couldn't make it faster because like you need to wait for the smart contract on L1 to be deployed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Nir? Yeah, thanks for, thanks for inviting us. Um, I think this was very nice. So um, we're very excited about Aglia. We're very excited about chain abstraction. And um, the idea of the users should be abstracting the, the underlying chain and execute anything they want to execute and transact on any of the DApps that they want to interact with. Um, if you guys want, I'll just drop a link to new.org. That is that all the information that you that you could find around chain abstraction and and new protocol. And thanks a lot for inviting us. Wonderful. Um, and then, yeah, I'll start with uh, Jordy. If people want to help out, uh, number one, final thoughts, I should say. And then also, if people want to uh, uh, contribute, learn more about this, get involved, where where would you suggest they go? Uh, 
Well, I mean, uh, first of all, it says that, that this aggregation layer is uh, very new and everything needs to be built. So here we really need uh, a lot of uh, resources and community resources. I mean, there is protocols that should run on top of uh, the ag layer libraries that should uh, uh, simplify and help developers to build things uh, between this cross-chain uh, communication, uh, tooling, uh, infrastructure, uh, I mean, uh, monitoring, I mean, there is a lot, a lot of pieces that uh, needs to be built uh, besides the, the core. So what I suggest is, I mean, as any other open source project, I mean, I would uh, uh, send people to the, to the code, to the GitHub repositories, or, what, or everything that we're building in uh, Polygon is open source. And the best way to get engaged to these uh, projects, and I would say to any other uh, open source project, is to go to the to the to the <clears throat> to the GitHub repository. Of course, this uh, this uh, Discord is very good point also to 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 get started. And yeah, there is um, many groups and many people. We can also you can also find us in. Um, a lot of the conference and talk directly with us. And but again, I mean, if you have a project, if you have an idea, if you have, if you see place that you can contribute, I mean, very much welcome to talk to any of us, uh, any of us, and I mean, start uh, working on that direction. Amazing. Um, and we'll get final thoughts from Keneal, but first, um, yeah, like interacting with us at conferences, uh, Polygon has a large presence at Token 2049 in Dubai. Uh, we're going to have a variety of co-sponsored, you know, events and things like that. So you'll be able to see us if you'd like to. Um, I'm going to try to find a link that lists all of those, but if not, just check out our uh, Twitter where we're going to be posting that as well. Keneal, do you have final thoughts? Uh, yeah, mm, uh, yeah, I'm audible. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Jordy. Uh, sorry, 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 just yes, go ahead, Jordy. Yeah, oh, okay, go, go, ahead. go, go, Neil, go. All right, Kadil, you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, that's much. Um, I guess, uh, I believe it is not an L2. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I think Mengshi is here from ASTAR. Uh, if they want to give a final talk or final. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Hi, Mengshi. Oh, oh God. Hi. Uh, yeah, if you want to just give a quick intro to your project um, and, and who you are, and then what we'll do is in a future talk, we'll try to bring your group on as well and uh, make sure that all the Discord bugs are worked out. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Hudson. Yeah, let me briefly introduce Asta and uh, myself. And my name is Minxi. I'm leading the research and strategy side at Asta Foundation. And Asta, we have been building one of the largest blockchain ecosystem in just starting from Japan. Uh, previously, we have been the we have built out the one of the largest power chain in the Polkadot ecosystem. And right now, we are focusing on our Ethereum layer two powered by Polygon CDK. Amazing. So what we'll do, we're doing is we're giving um, some final thoughts, and I think Brendan had to drop, uh, but I will just do a final thought there. And again, uh, sorry, sorry we couldn't get you on earlier, but we'll try to have uh, you and a lot of our other uh, people helping with the ag layer in the future. Uh, thank everyone, thanks everyone so much for coming out today. Um, Polygon.technology slash events has online and IRL events that Polygon is going to be participating in, including um, token 2049 in Dubai. We have a variety of things if you click on that. Um, and yeah, just this was really great. The recording of this is going to be on YouTube. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel uh, and then click on the live tab. Uh, we also have the streaming on uh, Twitter. So if you find that post, it should be on there as well. Thanks everyone for all the questions. Um, until next time, everyone have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.